the way that Gypsy Traveller art is treated um, because it's been very marginalised and that's why the title is Hidden Treasures because we're trying to give greater prominence to the, um, the place of Gypsy Traveller art in society mm. to um, engage the wider public in generating creative dialogue um, that will sort of establish a route um, that Gypsy Traveller Art can can follow, you know, that will take it to its rightful place in society because it's not being respected at present. Uh, and, you know, it seems to be um, the butt of elitist, uh, you know, mm. elitist um, treatment and, and it's been relegated. Uh, so, we, we feel it's not actually getting the respect it deserves, it, just like gypsy travellers tend not to get the respect they deserve and become a seldom heard voice in society. So this is something that we felt needed to be addressed through the art to show that we are a visible presence, that we're still here. People constantly approach me and say, where have all the gypsy travellers gone? Whatever happened to them? Well, here we are, we've just been starved of attention. You know, so um, that that was what generated the, the the idea, the mindset behind this event. That there's a need for gypsy travellers to be, uh, you know, empowered and to educate wider society regarding the culture, because we find that we're, you know, consistently misrepresented and um, misportrayed by people who think they know better about our culture than we do. So this is about providing the community with a voice and you know also to say that we are service providers to the wider community that we have a definite contribution to make in society which can benefit all of society and therefore you know we shouldn't be shunned as a community. So this is the message that we're trying to convey through the art and the project today, um, as well as having visual arts, gives prominence to other art forms such as music. Um, you know, we have a Sardinian folk singer who's a celebrated figure, Elena Piras, and she'll be singing some Gypsy Traveller songs, some Gaelic songs, also known as the Gypsy Traveller community in Scotland as well as some songs by Robert Burns who it emerges has been using a material which was grist to his mill taken from gypsy travellers you know uh, during his lifetime so finally that's been acknowledged by museum professionals such as Rona Ramsey who's going to be giving a talk um, from, on behalf of Stirling University about the way in which gypsy traveller artefacts and objets d'art are often hidden away and, you know, tucked away in, in archives rather than put out on display for the public to, to view and to uh, understand and appreciate. So, um, other than that, we've got a, a series of, yeah, other than that, we've got uh, a series of um, workshops, people doing crafts, giving demonstrations, um, there'll be ladies filming, uh, there'll be basket making, wooden flower making, paper flower making, um, also Rosanna, my sister, is going to give a little tour of the day's exhibition in Gaelic, um, and there's a lucky draw being put on by Christine from New Zealand who's of Gypsy Traveller Extraction and has made the long journey from New Zealand so anyone can take part in that free draw and try to win a prize. Um, there should be a bardo outside the theatre with someone doing a bit of dukering or fortune telling and um, there's going to be contemporary art in the foyer from Daniel Baker in the form of a, a mirror panel um, bender tent that reflects, you know, the hidden connections of his family with gypsies in England who used to camp on Green Common. 
Um, so it all ties in fairly nicely and you know we hope that people find it to be both educational and pleasurable and, and derive some benefit from the day's proceedings. This is a painting called The Cage Fight which shows the ribs of a bender tent and a gypsy traveller who's just slucked a ruble of EP. He's had his bottle of red wine, so he's making a swipe at a passing hare who's thrown a punch bar. It was my interpretation of how members of the public view gypsy travellers. Now, they tend to think that we're all engaged in bare knuckle boxing and cage fighting, and that's all we're fit for. So, uh, I wanted to use the frame of the traditional galley, which someone had put down in the woods here as an, installa an art installation and I used that as my um, inspiration for this painting. But the figure in the painting is based on a grand uncle who was lame made, suffered from polio as a child and he had a crutch and he used to like his bottle of red wine because there was very little else uh, that he could enjoy in life as one of his guilty pleasures, you know. He used to like just to lie out in the, the galley and suck red wine. And I, he was one of the group of family members referred to locally as the Rat Pack, which brings me on to my next painting. This painting is a recent work as well, again commissioned by Creative Scotland. It's called The Rat Pack and brings to mind uh, a conversation I had with a local in the community who told me that he had often joked with his peers that my blood relatives were uh, what they had known as, uh, what they referred to as the Rat Pack because they used to like a good time and they were given to uh, hedonistic tendencies apparently. So they, this uh, depicts them lying after a heavy drinking session, you know, having down several rubles of peeve and gonies of peeve, which are like bottles of alcohol and bags of alcohol. So they're lying, <laughs> they're lying in the recovery mode around the oak tree and they've got the billy can going on the fire so uh, you know the drinks obviously run out of this stage and they want to, to sober up and this is how the community views gypsy travellers they won't provide them with a uh, meaningful employment they won't give them any uh, you know decent life opportunities and then they sit back in judgment which i think is it's a bit unfair actually because in many ways the Rat Pack were in that position due to the treatment they received over a long period of time in society. And so, you know, it would be easy to be very judgmental and harsh and critical, but in many ways society has to acknowledge the role um, it plays in how people turn out at the end of the day and if they're deprived of uh, meaningful life chances and opportunities then who can blame them for enjoying a guilty pleasure when that's all they've got in their lives. There'll be a number of speakers at the event and they're very distinguished figures such as Rona Ramsey who is a museums professional and a research postgraduate at Stirling University and um, she's going to talk about the fact that artefacts related to gypsy travellers have become in many ways hidden objects uh, and this is something which she has experienced and encountered on her travels around Scotland. So she's now trying to uh, generate a response to that which will afford gypsy traveller artefacts with um, you know, um, a greater uh, visible presence in museums. So that, that can be addressed and tackled. Um, also, Nicola Cowmeadow is going to be here from Culture in Perth and Kinross and the AK Bell Library. Uh, now, Nicola took part in a World War One exhibition and arts project, so she was heavily involved in collating information and doing research around 
the departmental committee on tinkers, um, which you know the the research is now in the archives at Blair Castle, and the eighth Duchess of Athol, Catherine Ramsay, was a key figure on the committee. But that again has been buried in the archive, and has never really seen the light of day. So Nicola's going to be talking about that and how. Uh, hidden links within the community are quite uh, traceable. You know, people think that they can't trace their relatives and mm. you don't know whether anyone is a gypsy traveller in society, but Nicola's going to show that that's not the case and that, you know, people can actually um, find out more about their cultural background, their origins, if they so wish. Mm. Um, and David, David McPhee from Perth and Kinross Council, again one of the project partners, David's going to be talking about uh, the, the World War One project as a legacy project and you know, what is a uh, hope for in terms of the long term aims and objectives mm. uh, emanating or arising from that project, you know, what we hope to see happening down the line. Uh, with regard to Gypsy Travellers because uh, Gypsy Traveller art has been in many ways uh, underfunded and marginalised. The artists have not been appreciated or supported to date and this is something that Daniel Baker who's a PhD qualified uh, contemporary Gypsy artist has raised in conversation with me. Now Daniel said that you know there is funding in place to collect um, pre-existing art done by gypsy travellers, but in many ways that it's viewed as obsolete and dated because they're not actually commissioning any new work by gypsy artists. So it's not celebrating the culture as a live culture. And one of the aims of the event today is to engage the wider public and to allow people, um, you know, the platform to come forward and learn and acquire new skills, to update existing skills, maybe in basket making, flower making, to engage with gypsy travellers, to see that we are a visible presence in society, and we do actually exist. Well, to summarise, I would say the key aims and objectives of today are education, empowerment, uh, engagement and entertainment because A, we want to firstly educate members of wide, uh, wider society regarding our cultural background and distinctive origins. Uh, B, we wish to empower gypsy traveller artists on the day um, and also to and bring them together so that they can exchange creative ideas and input. Uh, then, you know, we want engagement with members of the wider community so that we can resolve some of the issues and uh, address the needs of gypsy travellers, um, you know, given the feedback and the suggestions and input on the day that might kick start matters for gypsy travellers. Mm. And ultimately, we wish to entertain the visitors who, uh, you know, we are privileged to have here today uh, who have invested their time in attending this event. So, thank you very much on behalf of the Nakin community.